Well, good morning, First Church family. Thank you for joining us online today, either on the website or on the YouTube channel. I trust and pray you're doing well and hope you're staying healthy. Thank you for joining us today. I do want to encourage you to call in on our sermon by phone program each week. I'm bringing a, a new message on Psalms 23 each week. Uh, we also have a new number for you to call, a, a number called uh, 941-870-3945. That'll be on the screen. That way you can call that local number and listen to the message that I share on the phone. Tell your friends about it, and thank you for listening in. Now let's prepare for worship today as we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this time of worship. May each person who joins us today online be blessed in some way. May each of them be encouraged and feel your Holy Spirit present with them wherever they are. Bless this time of worship today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to join me in this Glory Days declaration that is on the screen as we recite this together. These days are glory days. My past is past. My future is bright. God's promises are true, and his word is sure. With God as my helper, I will be all he wants me to be, do all he wants me to do, and receive all he wants me to receive. These are glory days. Now let us join together our voices as we unite our voices in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, uh, let us remember those who are sick and are in need of healing. I ask your prayers for Rosemary Altoff, who will be having surgery soon. I also ask your prayers for the infant child named Faith Pierce, 22 months old, who is in critical condition from a swimming incident. Uh, baby Faith was our baby Jesus two years ago in our church pageantry here. And so I ask you to continue to pray and pray for baby Faith during her parents during these days. I also want to remind you that services for Doherty Merritt will, will be held here at the church on August the 8th at 2 p.m. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, as we come to you in this day, we pray for those who are in sick and are in need of healing. We pray, O oh God, for your healing touch upon Rosemary and the surgery she is going to be having. We pray for baby Faith that you bring healing to her. We pray for your comfort be with her family during this time. We pray for the needs of people everywhere. We pray that as your people, we will be mindful of the needs of others and reach out in loving ways to let your love shine forth through our words and actions. In Christ's name we pray. Now as we pray together, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together as the body of Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends, for all that I've heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This I command you, to love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've titled my sermon today, I Have Called You Friends. I Have Called You Friends friends. The story is told of two five-year-olds who loved to play together. Of course, they were neighbors. Kevin and Drake were inseparable buddies. One Saturday morning, the, the two boys had discovered two tree branches would make great swords to stab at each other. 
Kevin's dad, Kenneth, had warned the boards, the boys, that sword fighting was probably not a good idea. But no sooner than his warning was out of his mouth, Drake had slapped Kevin across the face with his sword. Kevin had fallen to the ground screaming bloody murder. Drake decided it was time for him to race home next door. Kevin's dad, Kenneth, comes over and gently picks up his crying son and carries him into the house for mom's assistance. Then dad goes next door to inform Drake's parents of the incident. Your son Drake just hit my son Kevin in the face with a stick. Please keep your son away from my son. Drake's dad turns to him and says, Son, and he quickly closes the door. Believing justice served, Kenneth returns home to calm down. A half hour later, Kevin, whose face is bruised, blistered, and cut, comes out of his room to talk to his dad. Then, as if nothing ever happened, Kevin asked his dad, Dad, can I ask you something? Sure, son, what is it? Daddy, Kevin said, can Drake come back to see me? What? Kevin's dad asked. After what he did to you? No, absolutely not. After what he did to you? No, he cannot come back over here. Kenneth looks over at his son, Kevin, who's now on the verge of tears. Son, Kenneth says, I don't understand. Drake hits you in the face with a stick, and now you want him to come back over to play? Son, what is the matter with you now? Daddy, you don't understand, Kevin says. Drake is my very best friend. Suddenly, Dad Kenneth stopped to analyze his son Kevin's words. What was he hearing his son Kevin say? He was hearing his son Kevin say, Daddy, I love Drake. He can do nothing to destroy that love we have for each other. Daddy, he's my best friend. Later in the day, Kenneth takes Kevin's hand and together they walk over to Drake's house. Drake answered the door and immediately apologizes to Kevin for hitting him in the face. The two boys once again began playing together. What I want to invite you today to do is to listen to what Kevin had said to his dad. Daddy, you don't understand. Drake is my very best friend. Think about those words for a minute. One day Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he says to them, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father have been made known to you. We need to notice that in Jesus saying this to his disciples, he's telling taking their relationship to the next level of trusted friendship. He continued to say to them, Everything I have learned from the Father I have made known to you. You see, Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for anything that could possibly come to them. In this relationship with his disciples, we can see his great care he had for his followers and believers. And isn't that what friends do for each other? They care and show their care for each other. Through thick and thin, through rough times and good times, through the fire, they stay close to each other. They help each other through the rough spots and the crises in life. They know each other's deepest yearnings and dreams and goals in life. And they encourage each other in those efforts. Now I know all of this sounds really good, but there is a reality that we must also face in this world. 
That reality says, according to sociologists, for instance, men in the United States today are largely, quote, friendless. 60% in one poll suggested men over 30 cannot identify a single person in whom they would term close friends. Among the minority who do report having one or more close friends, most of those relationships, without exception, were established during childhood, high school, or college. And what's really alarming to us is the suggestion that American men virtually cease making friends as young adults. We may have fishing buddies or golfing buddies or other types of buddies, but those are acknowledged as merely functional relationships, functional relationships, rather than genuine emotional attachments. Now, ladies, adult American ladies, fare a bit better than us guys. When asked, most of the women can name five or six other women whom they trust as close friends. But when the subject is pursued in depth, many of those close friends prove to be also merely functional relationships as well. They may have their exercise class buddies, their quilting circle buddies, their church women's groups. Here's the bottom line for us all in this. As contemporary Americans overall, we are a pretty lonesome, friendless bunch. So amusingly enough, no wonder barbers and beauticians and bartenders wind up serving as outlets for the pent-up, unshared feelings of millions of Americans. Support groups of various kinds, I'm told, are one of the fastest growing sociological phenomenons of the 90s. And we are not much better currently here in America today. The reality for us all is we all need friends. Jesus knew the disciples then and now need friends, and so he has drawn up a process of how to be friends and demonstrated to us all of in his own actions and words. In my own personal story, let me tell you about my friend Jerry Bailey. Jerry's house was right across the street from my home church there in Lamont, Florida. He went to the Baptist church, and I went to the Methodist church. But once a month, both churches met together. And Jerry and I became the closest of friends. We spent many a day playing football in his yard next to his house, or he'd be visiting with me down on the farm. Why, we even considered ourselves blood brothers. We did everything together. We explored the river sinks of the Osceola River, the Wasissa River, fishing and camping and hunting together. We worshiped together. We prayed together. One night on the Wasissa River, we were camping, and the whole night we spent fighting mosquitoes in our tent. But we only had one difference in our lives. I went to Florida State, and he had to go to the University of Florida. The audacity of him to go to the University of Florida. Well, I've forgiven him for that over these years. But we never let that even stop our friendship. And to this day, we are still considered blood brothers. One of the greatest honors I ever received was from Jerry when he called me and invited me to speak at his dad's memorial service. What an honor it was for me. As I think of Jesus and his disciples, I know that there were times when they may not have agreed on everything that came to them. But I assure you they worked together on those things that mattered the most, inviting others to join them in their kingdom work. Friends work together, pray together, play together, 
struggle together, spend time together. Jesus spent time with his disciples. Underscore the word time. For you see, I believe that's what's wrong with our American culture. The lack of friends is related to the lack of time we spend with each other. We're too busy as Americans. Maybe during this COVID time, we should take advantage of the slowdown and spend more time developing relationships in conversation. Recently, I've discovered how much I enjoyed board games like, yes, Monopoly and Marbles and even the card game 21. Maybe you ought to ask yourself the question, do you need to slow down? My challenge to you today and to the coming days is to seek to become friends with others. Someone perhaps needs your friendship. Isn't there enough loneliness in the world today? Isn't there enough hurt in the world? Remember Kevin's words, Dad, you don't understand. You see, Drake is my very best friend. Go be someone's friend today. They're searching and waiting for you to call. Make that call today. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we value the words of Jesus when he called his disciples friends. May we value that word and be friends with others in this world. Guide us to those who are hurting those who are alone and need a friend, those who are afraid and need a friend, may we become their friends. This is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our offering today, I want to again say thank you for your continued support of your church with your mailed in ties and online offerings and special contributions. Your love and support of your church has certainly been what has sustained us over these past few weeks. Your loyalty to give in support of your church has certainly been a tremendous witness to this community. We give thanks to you for your continued support. Let us pray. Oh God, we do give you thanks for the love of your people in support of their church and ministry. We pray your blessing upon these gifts that they send and bring to your church, that they are used to lift up Christ to a broken world, to a broken community. May in offering Christ to the world, Hearts can be won, and healing can begin. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Mi sheberak i mohtenu me kor habraka libohtenu bless those in need of healing with rafua shalama the renewal of body the renewal of spirits, and let us say, Amen. Mi 
Sheberach Avotenu Mikor Habracha Limotenu May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say ah oh, amen mi Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shelema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Ah. Receive this benediction and blessing. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. <laughs> Our true faith confessing the people of God from this well.